Okay, today we're going to talk about the Chrysler electronic distributor, the OEM style distributor, like it would be in a 318 or a 360 or even 273. Okay, so we've got eight cylinders here. You'll see them marked in the firing order. It is 18436572. Okay, here's our rotor, our reluctor. The little lines are the reluctor here. And here's our pickup coil, which can be moved. And I'll show you why in a minute here. Okay, so the pickup coil point is right in the center of the coil. You'll see the little vertical uh, metal bar in there. And that bar is magnetic and the pickup coil has wires coming off of it. And what happens is when these little veins pass that point on the pickup coil, it sends about a, a one volt AC pulse through those wires to your ignition module. And that's what makes your coil fire. It's what tells the coil when to fire. So what we're gonna talk about is rotor phasing. This is something that a lot of people don't realize what it is or how it affects anything or what you can do about it. So I'm gonna describe that to you real quick. There is, um, uh, before I get started, give me just a second, I'll be right back. I need to grab a distributor real quick. Okay, thank you for waiting. Sorry about that. I've got my distributor here. I'm just gonna set it up here for a minute until we get around to needing that. Okay, so what happens is the rotor turns as the engine's turning. And on a small block Mopar, the rotor turns clockwise. It turns this way. So it fires cylinder number one, then cylinder number eight, and then cylinder number four and so on all the way around as these little points line up to the pickup coil. Okay, so what happens is if the phasing is off on a distributor, you'll see the lineup of the pickup coil and the, and the um, reluctor vein right there. What happens is when the rotor turn and the, and the um, reluctor turn, they turn together, okay? Now, that remember from my first video the, on the distributor, the distributor bottom shaft and top half where this is mounted are not solidly connected. The fly weights inside the distributor will advance this as RPMs go up, okay? So what we've got is, if for example, our rotor is going this way, and these veins line up right here, that's gonna fire the coil and a spark is gonna come down through here and it's gonna jump from that corner to this terminal inside your cap, okay? That's the phasing is off, okay? What we'd really like to have is we'd like to have that real close to that when it fires. Because what happens is when the weights on the distributor fly out and advance the timing, this is still gonna fire where it is here, but it's gonna fire it sooner because this is this rotor down here is advanced. So the vein's gonna come around here sooner and fire that plug sooner. So it'll fire, for example, right around in here. When the distributor starts advancing mechanically, this will move like this. Okay, so the optimum for rotor phasing would really be where the rotor is in area of that contact in the distributor cap when the coil fires. So what, hap what happens is if you were to watch this with a timing light, you would see that the, that the, um, the rotor will come around to right around it somewhere in here when the cylinder actually fires and that's at your, your base timing, okay? Your initial timing. So what happens, let's say that we're at zero timing right now. What happens is this all rotates. You're rotating the housing to advance your initial timing. That, that makes this come down here 
a little more. The pickup senses the rotors, I mean the um, reluctors sooner, and it causes that to spark. Well, your rotor might be over here when that happens because of advancing, I'm sorry, your rotor might be like that at 10 degrees advanced on your timing. So the problem is that when this gets so far out, like for example, my car, I run about 18 degrees initial, and that would put my rotor over here, somewhere around in there, when my pickup coil fires, okay? So let's put this back to center, just for the sake of the discussion. So what we want is we want to move the rotor or the base plate inside the distributor so that our rotor is closer to that terminal when the mechanical advance starts to come in this will advance even further so let's say it's right there at my 18 degrees initial timing when my distributor weights fly out this is going to advance this more okay now you see we're getting way far away from that and almost kind of close to number eight there what we don't want is this getting over in here to where it could pick a terminal. And I realize that's a big gap, but it does happen because obviously the distributor's quite a bit smaller than that. So you don't have a lot of room between these. You only have about an inch and a quarter between these terminals. So if this rotor gets in between those, it could very well jump to the next cylinder, which would be cylinder number eight especially if you have something like HEI or, um, or you know, one of the aftermarket ignition boxes that are high powered, that's, that'll make a difference there. So what we want to do is we want to try to make sure that rotor stays within about right there in that area so it can jump from one corner to that terminal, from that corner to that terminal, but stay in that range. Okay, and I'll show you in a minute how we do that. Now, another thing that happens is the vacuum advance also pulls in advance if you use vacuum advance. And with ported manifold vacuum, this doesn't do anything until you start getting into the throttle. When you start getting into the throttle, it shifts that whole plate that this magnetic pickup coil is on. And when it does that, it doesn't change your rotor position any. And that's, that's a little bit hard for some people to understand, but what's happening is you're actually only moving the pickup coil. You're not moving the rotor and, and the um, reluctor when you do that. So actually what happens is, let's say at, um, at 1,000 RPMs, let's say that your distributor is right in here somewhere, okay? When your mechanical advance starts coming in, this, this, it's going to shift this whole rotor. It's going to come over this way. When the magnetic pickup coil moves because of the vacuum advance, this doesn't change position. Only this changes position. So we're not too concerned about it there. So what we do is we take a distributor, and you can see how... You can see the rotor down inside there, okay? So let's say, well, let's don't say, that is cylinder number one on this distributor cap. Now, it doesn't matter which cylinder you use, as long as you use your timing light on that wire. It could be any one of the cylinders where this hole is. As long as your timing light is running off that wire where the hole is, then you'll be seeing the same thing. So I don't know if you can see down inside there, probably not very well, but you can see how that rotor is lined up with that terminal. What we want is we want, when we do our initial timing, our base timing, you'll see how that gives maybe 15, 12, 15 degrees, but you see it getting further away from that terminal. Okay, we wanna keep that rotor in a range like this from there to there. We don't want it getting any further out of that either way. Now I'll tell you how we do that. When the timing light flashes, you're going to see that rotor look like it's stopped and you'll be able to see where it's lining up with this tower right here. 
okay, as you run your engine a little quicker, bring your RPMs up, you will see that rotor start shifting over like this to the right side, the way I'm holding it right now. Okay, so we want that range right in there. Now, the way I do that with these factory distributors is I take the screws out of the distributor housing and take the distributor apart, and I will slot these screw holes. You can see the little black marks right there. I slot these screw holes about an eighth of an inch or so to each side. And I do that with the other screw too, the screw on the other side. So then what happens is that lets us move the whole base plate for the pickup coil, which does not interfere with the rotor and the rotor position. It is going to stay right where it is. So what will happen is you can actually tap on one of these screws now that the slot has been put in it and you can move that base plate a little bit so you can get your your rotor running right in this area right here at any rpm that it runs okay now another thing too is the longer the gap is from this point to that terminal the more wear is going to be on that gap and on the terminal both the longer the spark has to jump the hotter it is and the more damage it does to the metals that it's jumping from and jumping to so that's the basics on rotor phasing and why it needs to be looked at on some distributors most distributors they're they're so close you might as well not even bother with it but if you wanted to do it for the fun of it just take an old cap like this cut a big hole in it so you can see the rotor put a timing light on that on that wire right there I mean, on that terminal, wire, terminal, both. And you'll see where, the, where that spark is firing and, and how it's lined up with that terminal inside the cap. It's pretty easy to do. Aftermarket distributors have that, some aftermarket distributors have that built into them to change the rotor phasing. And they make a, um, some companies make a rotor that's actually changeable so you can change where the, where the arm is compared to the drive cap. Okay, so now we've got cylinder one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. All right, that's the firing order for a small block Mopar. And when you're putting spark plug wires in, you don't put this wire goes to the number one cylinder and this one goes to the number two cylinder. You don't do that. I've seen people try that and can't figure out why their car won't run. The number one wire where this is at top dead center on the compression stroke on the motor, you start with there at number one. The number eight wire goes here. The number four wire goes here. The number three wire goes here and so on around the distributor. And that's to make sure your firing order is correct. These two right here are the troublemakers. Those get switched so common I can't tell you. I can't tell you. I've done that a few times myself. And as soon as I start the engine, I'm like, I can tell, oh, I've got five and seven swapped. So I'll go out there and switch them. And uh, I don't know why it is, but it's just those two seem to be the ones that get switched or put on wrong in the first place. Okay, so that, di that describes distributor phasing and why it's needed and what it does. And really, it's just remember to keep the spark when the spark happens, these as close together as you can, centered as much as you can. Like I said, the rotor will move back and forth with RPM, but you want it to stay as close as you can to that terminal. All right, that's about it. Thanks for watching the video. This is from the Mopars for Us group, MoparsForUs.net. And uh, MoparsForUs at gmail.com is the email address. If you have any questions, you can shoot us an email. Or you can ask questions on the, on the YouTube page and I can answer them there too. All right. Thanks again, you guys, for watching my video. I hope that explained things. Bye.